Hey guys, what's up? Um, so this is going to be a video on how to make a dubstep wobble bass. The reason I'm making it is because I looked on YouTube for my own information about how to make a bass when I was trying to first start uh, making dubstep and I was, really was not happy with any of the videos. Uh, I found, I looked through probably 25 or 30 videos and most of them just sounded like crap or were really basic and would not sound very good in a track. So. Uh, I'm going to share one of the ones that I've made with you. Um, I don't know if you're going to like it, but let me know if you do. Uh, then, you know, try and use it in your track. Alright, so let's get into this. We're going to start off with a synth here. Um, I am using, for my bass, Citrus. Uh, it's a great synth that comes with FL Studio. Uh, it's really very versatile and it's a great synth. So. That's what I'm going to use for this tutorial here. I'm only using operators 1 and 2 for my bass here, so um, relatively limited, but it's still going to sound good. So operator 1 uh, should at the end have this slanted Z shape. So try and make your sliders um, as close as you can to what I have here. My first two at around my first two sliders for the operator 1 are at around 50%. My third and fourth are down at the very bottom. My fifth is at the very top, and my sixth is at the very bottom. Um, and for my second operator here, it's got a more of a weird shape, but my first and second sliders are at around one third of the way up. My third is at around two thirds of the way up. My fourth is all the way at the bottom. Fifth is all the way at the top, and sixth is all the way at the bottom. And then over here, just make sure that both of your filters for um, operator 1 and 2 are turned all the way up, so drag those all the way to the right. Alright, and then we're going to go over to filter 1 here, um, and then go to the cutoff tab and the LFO. So this, you just want to make sure that your tension, your skew, and your pulse width are all um, at 90 degrees pointing straight up. Uh, don't mess with those knobs at all, they're good where they are. Your speed, it doesn't really matter where it is right now. We're going to modulate that later. So um, that's going to be changing. So you don't need to worry about that for the moment. And that's the synth. Now, by itself, that's going to sound pretty bad. Um, let's see. This is what it sounds like with none of the effects that we're going to be putting on. so pretty shitty. Um, but now we are going to put on these effects and it's going to really beef up the sound and make it a little dirtier and uh, more just generally better for dubstep. Alright, so here my synth is routed to mixer track number 8. So here it is. I named it Womp Bass. Um, so my first effect is Fruity Fast Distortion. Um, my preamp is almost all the way up. My threshold is all the way down. My distortion type is set on A. My mix is at around 50%, a little less. And my post gain is at around two thirds. But you can change that um, based on how loud or um, aggressive you need your sound, your bass sound. Um, so that's the distortion. Now we've got, of course, an EQ. You should have this on most of your mixer tracks. Um, for this, I took out, as you can see, almost all the low end. It was interfering with my kick drum and my beat. Um, so I took it all out. It really didn't affect the sound of the bass in a negative way, so uh, I wasn't too worried about it. And then I'm boosting the mid frequencies um, at around the C4 mark, and the C7 mark is where it gets the highest. And it drops off a little bit again towards the very high end, but uh, it's still being boosted. So I'll try and get your EQ to look approximately like this. But you know, play around with it, see what sounds good. Uh, my sound goodizer, I, I put this on a lot of my tracks. Um, it really helps to make the sound richer and uh, just generally fuller, and it just sounds better. Um, it sounds gooder. So. I have it on the C mode, 
and I have it around two-thirds of the way, the slider is at around two-thirds of the way up. You can just click and drag here and move it up and down, but it, keep it around two-thirds. Uh, I also have a flanger, and I have the preset slight detune set for that. I have a chorus, and that's on polychorus preset. The flanger and the chorus are just going to help widen the sound. Um, I also have a wave shaper. This is going up to around two-thirds, straight up the line, and then right there it just moves straight over, flattens off. Um, so just get it to be like that. Lastly, I have a flanges, which is really a cool, cool effect that FL Studio comes with. Um, I have my preset right now on flanger 2. However, a lot of these will make really cool, unique sounding bass lines. Uh, so, you know, play around with it. I had some luck with classic, some, uh, I think, surround flanger and vibrate both sounded great. Um, but I chose to stick with flanger 2. It sounded probably the best, but there are a lot of unique sounds you can get out of that effect. I'd just play around with it and see what you like. So then, lastly, um, you're going to need, well, second to last, you're going to need a bass line, obviously. Um, mine's pretty pretty basic here. Um, I've got four bars and three notes. Goes up, then back down a little bit. So uh, For this synth, it's best to keep your notes at around the mid C2 to mid C3 range. So right within this area is going to be the best sounding, most rich sounding bass you can get. Um, outside of that it starts to get a little whiny and thin, but you know. Uh, and now lastly we are going to modulate the speed at which your um, cutoff frequency is changing. So as I said before, I was telling you that um, in your filter tab here under your cutoff and your LFO you won't need to worry about your speed because we're going to be modulating it. Well, that's going to come into play now. So you right-click on your speed knob here and go to Edit Events in Piano Roll. And it's going to bring up, well, for you, it'll look like a flat line just like that. But for me, I've already edited it and uh, clicked and dragged and stuff. So this is what my modulation looks like through the as you move through the pattern how you're going to modulate it is it's going to have this green blob here and you can just click and drag to shape it as you would and this is going to control how fast your wobble is going so uh, down here if you keep it down here it's going to be going real slow like it's going to sound real sluggish and then as you click and drag you can shape it up to a mountaintop or something like that it's going to slowly build and go wobbling faster and faster and faster till it gets to the top and then back down so you want to play with this until it's um, s aligned well with your bass, with your uh, beat, sorry, and um, until the entire track synthesizes well like that. You got to have everything um, lined up so the beats aren't off with the wobbles. But this is what mine looks like. You probably won't be able to m copy mine very well. I just find your own, um, try and match it to your own beat, but. This is what mine looks like, some up and downs. And yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. Um, you know, make yourself a cool beat to throw in there. And you should have something that sounds like this at the end. sounds like without the beat. So that's gonna uh, that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Let me know if you uh, like the like the bass. Um, you know, rate my video, comment, whatever. Peace.